He was, he said, a dead man walking. Mohamed Mwazi, in the years before he went to Syria, described as paranoid, thinking the security services were closing in on him. The man who would be dubbed Jihadi John was on their radar, but Mwazi claimed they were harassing him. In an email exchange with a Mail on Sunday journalist in 2010, he wrote, Sometimes I feel like I'm a dead man walking, not fearing they may kill me, rather fearing that one day I'll take as many pills as I can so that I can sleep forever. I just want to get away from these people. The journalist he emailed said Emwazi seemed to have a persecution complex. He was convinced a laptop he'd sold had been bought by someone from MI5. What's becoming clearer are just the sort of links MI5 would, or at least should, have known about. He was part of a network linked with the 21-7 terror cell of would-be suicide bombers in London and an associate of Bilal Bajawi, who fought and died with the militant Somali group Al-Shabaab. The network also included Ibrahim Magag, placed on a control order in 2009. Magag, a judge said, too dangerous to be in London even for a short time. It's thought another two pupils at his North West London school had, over a period of time, also gone to fight in Somalia and Syria. But today, one of his school friends told the BBC that Mohamed Mwazi was intelligent. He was a good kid, he said, well behaved, not particularly religious, and there was nothing at the time to suggest that he was extreme. With Emwazi's time at the University of Westminster under scrutiny, the coalition is fighting about how far to limit hate preachers, and the government's accused by Labour of tying the security services' hands when it abolished the power to relocate terror suspects. We've always said that, that the relocation element of a control order uh, was valuable in that taking someone away from their, the networks who might be manipulating them or making them more extreme was a good thing to do. The realities of how to tackle radicalisation being laid bare. Lucy Manning, BBC News.